Mount Kilimanjaro, KL Mendi Ro, with its three volcanic cones, Kibo, Morenzi, and Shira, is a dormant volcanic mountain in Tanzania. It is the highest mountain in Africa, and rises approximately 4,877 meters from its base to 5,895 meters above sea level. The first recorded ascent to the summit of the mountain was by Hans Meyer and Ludwig Perchula in 1889. The mountain is part of the Kilimanjaro National Park and is a major climbing destination. The mountain has been the subject of many scientific studies because of its shrinking glaciers, geology and physical features. Kilimanjaro rises approximately 4,877 meters from its southern base in the plains near the municipality of Moshi to its summit height of 5,895 meters. Kilimanjaro is the highest volcano outside South America. Kilimanjaro is a large stratovolcano and is composed of three distinct volcanic cones. Kibo, the highest, Morenzi at 5,149 meters, and Shira, the shortest at 4,005 meters. Morenzi and Shira are extinct, while Kibo is dormant and could erupt again. Uhuru Peak is the highest summit on Kibo's crater rim. The Tanzania National Parks Authority, a governmental agency, and the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization list the height of Uhuru Peak as 5,895 meters. That height is based on a British Ordnance Survey in 1952. Since then, the height has been measured as 5,892 meters in 1999, 5,891 meters in 2008, and 5,888 meters in 2014. The interior of the volcanic edifice is poorly known, given the lack of large-scale erosion that could have exposed the interiors of the volcano. Eruptive activity at the Shira Ascenta commenced about 2.5 million years ago, with the last important phase occurring about 1.9 million years ago, just before the northern part of the edifice collapsed. Shira is topped by a broad plateau at 3,800 meters, which may be a filled caldera. The remnant caldera rim has been degraded deeply by erosion. Before the caldera formed and erosion began, Shira might have been between 16,000 feet and 17,000 feet high. It is mostly composed of basic lavas with some pyroclastics. The formation of the caldera was accompanied by lava emanating from ring fractures, but there was no large-scale explosive activity. Two cones formed subsequently, the phenolitic one at the northwest end of the ridge and the dolaritic Platzgegel in the caldera center. Both Morenzi and Kibo began erupting about one million years ago. They are separated by the Saddle Plateau at 4,400 meters elevation. The youngest dated rocks at Morenzi are about 448,000 years old. Morenzi forms a horseshoe-shaped ridge with pinnacles and ridges opening to the northeast which has a tower-like shape resulting from deep erosion, and a mafic dike swarm. Several large cirques cut into the ring, the largest of these sits on top of the Great Barranco Gorge. Also notable are the OST and West Barrancos on the northeastern side of the mountain. Most of the eastern side of the mountain has been removed by erosion. Morenzi has a subsidiary peak named Newman Tower. Kibo is the largest cone and is more than 15 miles wide at the Saddle Plateau altitude. The last activity here has been dated to between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago and created the current Kibo summit crater. Kibo still has gas emitting fumaroles in the crater. Kibo is capped by an almost symmetrical cone with escarpments rising 180 meters to 200 meters on the south side. These escarpments define a 2.5 KILOMETRE-wide caldera caused by the collapse of the summit. Within this caldera is the inner cone and within the crater of the inner cone is the Roish crater, which the Tanganyika government in 1954 named after Gustav Otto Richard Roish upon his climbing the mountain for the 25th time. 
The ash pit, 350 meters deep, lies within the Roche crater. About 100,000 years ago, part of Kibo's crater rim collapsed, creating the area known as the Western Breach and the Great Barranco. An almost continuous layer of lavas buries most older geological features, with the exception of exposed strata within the Great West Notch and the Kibo Barranco. The former exposes intrusions of cyanite. Kibo has five main lava formations. Phonotephrites and tephraphonolites of the lava tower group on a dike cropping out at 4,600 meters 482,000 years ago. Tephraphonolite to phonolite lavas characterized by rhomb megafenocrysts of sodic feldspars of the rhomb porphyry group. 460,000 minus 360,000 years ago. Aphiric phonolite lavas, commonly underlain by basal obsidian horizons, of the Lent group, 359,000 minus 337,000 years ago. Porphyritic tephraphonolite to phonolite lavas of the Caldera Rim group, 274,000 minus 170,000 years ago. Phonolite lava flows with the Jirin Fenacrists of the inner crater group, which represents the last volcanic activity on Kibo. Kibo has more than 250 parasitic cones on its northwest and southeast flanks that were formed between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago and erupted. Picro basalts, trachobasalts, anchromites, and basanites. They reach as far as Lake Chala and Tavata in the southeast and the Lenguru Mana Plain in the northwest. Most of these cones are well preserved with the exception of the Saddle Plateau cones that were heavily affected by glacial action. Despite their mostly small size, lava from the cones has obscured large portions of the mountain. The Saddle Plateau cones are mostly cinder cones with terminal effusion of lava, while the upper rhombozone cones mostly generated lava flows. All Saddle Plateau cones predate the last glaciation. According to reports from the Maasai, Lake Chala on Kibo's eastern flank was the site of a village that was destroyed by an eruption. The mountain is drained by a network of rivers and streams, especially on the wetter and more heavily eroded southern side and especially above 1,200 meters. Below that altitude, increased evaporation and human water usage reduces the water flows. The Lumi and Pangani rivers drain Kilimanjaro on the eastern and southern sides, respectively. Name The origin of the name Kilimanjaro is not precisely known, but a number of theories exist. European explorers had adopted the name by 1860 and reported that Kilimanjaro was the mountain's Kiswahili name. The 1907 edition of the Nuttall Encyclopedia also records the name of the mountain as Kilimanjaro. Johann Ludwig Krapf wrote in 1860 that Swahili along the coast called the mountain Kilimanjaro. Although he did not support his claim, he claimed that Kilimanjaro meant either mountain of greatness or mountain of caravans. Under the latter meaning, Kilima meant mountain and Jara possibly meant caravans. Jim Thompson claimed in 1885, although he also did not support his claim, that the term Kilimanjaro has generally been understood to mean the mountain of greatness. Though not improbably it may mean, the, white, mountain. Nyaro, is an ancient Kiswahili word for, shining. Similarly, Krapf wrote that a chief of the Wakamba people, whom he visited in 1849, had been to Jagger and had seen the Kima Jaju, mountain of whiteness, the name given by the Wakamba to Kilimanjaro, more correctly in the Kikumba language, this would be Kima Kyeu and this possible derivation has been popular with several investigators. Others have assumed that Kilima is Kiswahili for mountain. The problem with this assumption is that Kilima actually means hill and is, therefore, the diminutive of Mlima, the proper Kiswahili word for mountain. However, it is possible.
that an early European visitor, whose knowledge of Kiswahili, was not extensive, changed M. Lima to Kilima by analogy with the two Wachaga names, Kibo and Kimawenzi, a different approach is to assume that the Kilman part of Kilimanjaro comes from the Kichaga, Kilima, which means, which defeats, or Kilalima, which means, which has become difficult or impossible. The Jara part would then be derived from Nyea, a bird, or, according to other informants, a leopard, or possibly from Jero or a caravan, considering that the name Kilimanjaro has never been current among the Wachaga people. It is possible that the name was derived from Wachaga saying that the mountain was unclimbable, Kilimanjaro, or Kilimanjaro, and porters misinterpreted this as being the name of the mountain. In the 1880s, the mountain became a part of German East Africa and was called Kilima and D. Sharo, in German following the Kiswahili name components. On 6 October 1889, Hans Meyer reached the highest summit on the crater ridge of Kibo. He named it Kaiser Wilhelm Spitzer. That name apparently was used until Tanzania was formed in 1964, when the summit was renamed Uhuru, meaning Freedom Peak, in Kiswahili. History First sightings by non-indigenous explorers The mountain may have been known to non-Africans since antiquity. Sailors' reports recorded by Ptolemy mention of Moon Mountain and a spring lake of the Nile, which may indicate Kilimanjaro. Although available historical information does not allow differentiation among Mount Kenya, the mountains of Ethiopia, the Virunga Mountains, Kilimanjaro, and the Arwenzori Mountains. Before Ptolemy, Aeschylus and Herodotus referred to Egypt nurtured by the snows and a spring between two mountains, respectively. One of these mentions two tall mountains in the coastal regions with a valley with traces of fire in between. Martin Fernandez de Encisa, a Spanish traveler to Mombasa who obtained information about the interior from native caravans said in his Summa de Geographia that west of Mombasa stands the Ethiopian Mount Olympus, which is exceedingly high, and beyond it are the mountains of the moon, in which are the sores of the Nile. The German missionaries Johannes Riebmann of Mombasa and KRAPF were the first Europeans to try to reach the snowy mountain. According to English geographer Halford Mackinder and English explorer Harry Johnston, Riebmann in 1848 was the first European to report the existence of Kilimanjaro. Hans Meyer has claimed that Riebmann first arrived in Africa in 1846 and has quoted Riebmann's diary entry of the 11th of May 1848 as saying, This morning, at 10 o'clock, we obtained a clearer view of the mountains of Jagger, the summit of one of which was covered by what looked like a beautiful white cloud. When I inquired as to the dazzling whiteness, the guide merely called it cold, and at once I knew it could be neither more nor less than snow. Immediately I understood how to interpret the marvelous tales drive. KRAPF and I had heard at the coast of a vast mountain of gold and silver in the far interior, the approach to which was guarded by evil spirits, in light of these sources. Shearson Highland's assertion that Reebman first saw the mountain in 1840 appears to be erroneous. Climbing history 19th century explorers in August 1861. The Prussian officer Baron Karl Klaus von der Decken accompanied by English geologist R. Thornton made a first attempt to climb Kibo but got no farther than 8,200 feet owing to the inclemency of the weather in December 1862. Von der Decken tried a second time together with Otto Kirsten. They reached a height of 14,000 feet. In August 1871, missionary Charles New became the first European to reach the equatorial snows on Kilimanjaro at an elevation of slightly more than 13,000 feet. In June 1887, the Hungarian Count Samuel Teleki and Austrian Lieutenant Ludwig von Honel made an attempt to climb the mountain. Approaching from the saddle between Morenzi and Kibo, Honel stopped at 4,950 meters. 
but Teleki pushed through until he reached the snow at 5,300 meters. Later in 1887 during his first attempt to climb Kilimanjaro, the German geology professor Hans Meyer reached the lower edge of the ice cap on Kibo, where he was forced to turn back because he lacked the equipment needed to handle the ice. The following year, Meyer planned another attempt with Oskar Baumann, a cartographer, but the mission was aborted after the pair were held hostage and ransomed during the Abushiri revolt. In the autumn of 1888, the American naturalist Drive, Abbott and the German explorer Otto Ehrenfriedelers approached the summit from the northwest. While Abbott turned back earlier, Ellers at first claimed to have reached the summit rim but, after severe criticism of that claim, later withdrew it. In 1889, Meyer returned to Kilimanjaro with the Austrian mountaineer Ludwig Perchler for a third attempt. The success of this attempt was based on the establishment of several campsites with food supplies so that multiple attempts at the top could be made, without having to descend too far. Mayer and Perchula pushed to near the crater rim on October 3 but turned around exhausted from hacking footsteps in the icy slope. Three days later, on Perchula's 40th birthday, they reached the highest summit on the southern rim of the crater. They were the first to confirm that Kibo has a crater. After descending to the saddle between Kibo and Morenzi, Mayer and Pertschula attempted to climb the more technically challenging Morenzi but could reach only the top of Klute Peak, a subsidiary peak, before retreating due to illness. On October 18, they reascended Kibo to enter and study the crater, cresting the rim at Hans Meyer's notch. In total, Mayer and Perchler spent 16 days above 15,000 feet during their expedition. They were accompanied in their high camps by Mwini Amani of Pangani, who cooked and supplied the sites with water and firewood. The first ascent of the highest summit of Morenzi was made on 29 July 1912 by the German climbers Edward Oler and Fritz Klute who christened it Hans Meyer Peak. Oler and Klute went on to make the third ever ascent of Kibo via the Dry Golski Glacier and descended via the Western Breach. In 1989, the organizing committee of the 100-year celebration of the first ascent decided to award posthumous certificates to the African porter guides who had accompanied Meyer and Perchula. One person in pictures or documents of the 1889 expedition was thought to match a living inhabitant of Merangu, Johanna Kinyala Lauwo. Lauwo did not know his own age, nor did he remember Meyer or Perchula, but he remembered joining a Kilimanjaro expedition involving a Dutch doctor who lived near the mountain and that he did not get to wear shoes during the climb. Lauro claimed that he had climbed the mountain three times before the beginning of World War I. The committee concluded that he had been a member of Mayer's team and therefore must have been born around 1871. Lauro died on 10 May 1996, 107 years after the first ascent, but now is sometimes even suggested as co-first ascendant of Kilimanjaro. Fastest ascent and descent The fastest ascent descent has been recorded by the Swiss Ecuadorian mountain guide Karl Egloff, who ran to the top and back in 6 hours and 42 minutes on 13 August 2014. Previous records were held by Spanish mountain runner Kilian Jornet and by Tanzanian guide Simon Mtuy. Fastest female ascent and descent The female ascent record is held by Anne-Marie Flammersfeld. On 27 July 2015, she climbed to the summit in 8 hours, 32 minutes via the Umwa route, which is about 30 kilometers long. Born in Germany but living in Switzerland, she broke the record of Britain's Becky Shuttleworth who climbed to the summit in 11 hours, 34 minutes on 20 September 2014. Flammersfeld then needed 4 hours, 26 minutes to run down to the M. Waker Gate, for a combined ascent and descent time of 12 hours, 58 minutes. That broke the previous record of 18 hours, 31 minutes held by Debbie Berkman, youngest and oldest people to summit despite an age limit of 10 years for a climbing permit.
Keats' boy of Los Angeles was only seven years old when he summited Kilimanjaro on 21 January 2008. The oldest person to reach Uhuru Peak was American Robert Wheeler, who was 85 years and 201 days when he summited on 2 October 2014. In October 2010, Etha Kafer at age 84 became the oldest woman to summit the mountain. Ascents by people with disabilities wheelchair-bound Bernard Goosen scaled Kilimanjaro in six days in 2007, while in 2012 Kyle Maynard, who has no forearms or lower legs, crawled unassisted to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro.